Hey, this is Joe at Cable Guys. Today I'm going to help you squeeze the most out of ShaperBox's modulation power with a deep dive into ShaperBox 3's wave editing. I'll be cramming in as many editing tips and shortcuts as possible to help you draw, edit, and paint LFOs faster than ever before. And make sure you stick around right till the end where I'll show you how to bring all of these tricks together, taking your ShaperBox skills from beginner to pro. Right, let's jump in with a quick tour of the basics. Each one of ShaperBox's effects is controlled by at least one drawable LFO waveform. Let's start with Volume Shaper. Volume can be dragged up and down. Fire up some wave presets. These are categorized into common use cases and are great starting points for tweaking. The LFO modulates volume over time, and this symbol tells you that volume is being modulated. The average value of the waveform is shown here. Drag the slider to move the entire wave up or down, flattening at the top or bottom. You can adjust smooth to remove clicks, or for creative effects. By default, the LFO loops every bar sync to the door. For faster or slower speeds, change the LFO length using the arrows on menu. Shaperbox's LFOs can also run free in Hertz. Or at the pitch of a MIDI note and the LFO can be re-triggered by audio transients, a sidechain input or MIDI. Now, before we get into wave editing, let me show you this handy feature that will help you while you edit. Down here, you'll find the custom wave slots. To say you like the current wave, click in a slot down here to store it. You can store up to nine different waves within a preset. So I'll store a wave I like, make and save variations, then click to load them in the main editor and you can use automation or MIDI to switch between them for creative sequencing and live jamming. But I'll save that for another video. So wave presets are a great starting point, but it's way easier than you think to create your own waves from scratch. Here's ShaperBox's Filter Shaper module, which has two modulatable parameters. This colored diamond shows which control is being edited. As an aside, if you ever need more editing space, expand the editor with this button. So, ShaperBox's LFOs are made up of straight lines, smooth curves, or a mix of both. I'll click the trash can to reset the LFO. With the pointer tool selected, click an empty space to add hard points and drag them around to draw straight lines and ramps. Double click a point to delete it. If you mess up, the undo and redo buttons are your best friends, so get familiar with them. To lock points to the grid, switch on the snapped pointer. If you use snap all the time, toggle this option in the right click menu to keep snap on by default. Or hold shift to toggle snap on or off temporarily. And if you ever need a triplet grid, it's here in the right click menu. Next, let's look at how to make curves. To bend a straight line into a curve, hover over the line, then click and drag. This adds a bendable soft point. To add a soft point anywhere, control click in an empty space. To change a hard point to a soft point, or vice versa, just click on it. Or right click on a point to open this menu and change types from here. Here you'll also find the medium point from ShaperBox 2, which can be added directly by shift clicking. So by combining lines and curves, you can design any wave shape you need. Next, here's how to edit and manipulate your LFOs even further using selections. Click and drag around points to make a selection. Click this tool or anywhere outside a selection to deselect. Click and drag to reposition your selection. Again, you can snap to grid if needed. Selections come into their own when you want to fine tune the modulation range of your LFO points to find the perfect sweet spot. So say you like the timing of your points from left to right, but you want to adjust modulation intensity up or down. 
in this case hold Alt as you drag to lock the selection horizontally. Or you can hold Ctrl and Alt to lock vertically. So this will shift the horizontal timing of your points without changing their vertical modulation values. You can select all points with this tool icon or use the right click menu. Use these handles to scale and stretch your selection. Hold Alt and drag to scale from the center. Hold Control while stretching a corner or side handle to skew. And hold Alt and Control while dragging to skew from the center. Here's another pro tip. Say you've dialed in the perfect vertical range for your wave, but you want to try out some different options. Simply shift click wave presets or custom waves to load them in the same vertical range as the current wave. Now I'll show you how to use my favorite Shaperbox editing tools to draw lines, steps and curves even faster. These three tools down here are called pens. There's a line pen, an arc pen and an S-curve pen. First I'm going to choose the line pen. Click and drag in the editing area to draw a straight line. Without letting go of the mouse button, drag the line to set its length and angle. Then release the mouse to create the line. The pen remembers the last shape you drew. It's a bit like a stamp. And now click without moving the mouse to stamp the same line over and over. This is the fastest way to draw repeating fins like this. Here's another pro tip. Say you're using a pen, but then you want to edit the LFO points. You can hold shift to switch to the pointer momentarily. Once you've set the length of your pen stamp, you can move it around and click to design stepped sequences. And by clicking and dragging around at different heights and angles, you can design complex jagged waves. So that's the line pen. The other pens work in exactly the same way. Use the arc pen to paint smooth arced curves. This is handy for wobbles and sweeps. And stamp trimming and side chain shapes with the S curve pen. Now we're in power user territory, I'm going to show you how to combine everything you've learned with some time saving tools and shortcuts. Down here you'll find more LFO editing functions. As we've seen, the trash can deletes all points, but like many of these functions, it can be applied to only the points within a selection. In those times when you're stuck for inspiration, try adding some LFO points. Then punch the randomize button to give each point a random position and weight. Or maybe you're happy with the left to right rhythm of your LFO, in which case shift click the randomize button to preserve the point's timings and randomize only their vertical position. This next tool is deceptively powerful. Say you've made a simple shape. Click this two times button to double the waveform. Now make a variation. Then hit two times again. Make another change. And rinse and repeat. This way you can build up really complex waves. And you can shift click the two times button to triple the waveform instead. And this function works on selections too. Use this to add bursts of fast repeats. Combine all this with the selection skewing I showed you earlier to get crazy with complex shapes. Now, groove is especially important when modulating effects. So if you want to nudge the timing of your LFO, use the arrows to shift left or right by one grid space. And shift click to nudge in 1 16th of the grid resolution. I use this to give my modulation a lazy delayed groove. 
Then there's the three dots menu, which is the same as the right click menu. There's select all points. And move all or selected points to the grid. You can flip the wave horizontally or vertically and even apply this only to a selection. Every shaper box effect is multi-band, meaning you can modulate up to three frequency bands with different waves and settings. You can unlink the LFOs for different rhythms across bands. You can right-click, copy a wave, then paste it into a different band. Or you can even copy and paste between shaper effects. So there, now you know how to design shaper box LFOs like a boss. Drop a comment with any questions, subscribe to our channel, and check out Shaperbox3 at cableguys.com. Thank you.